Nancy and Jerry are, are back up for a little bit to enjoy our fall. And I asked Nancy if she wanted to preach. And then I answered and said, yes, she do. So maybe she's here today. Give her a warm welcome. Praise the Lord. It 
it seems like a pretty foolish insecurity now. But then it was a stressful thing. I ended up getting a few more, I found a hairdresser, got a few more dye jobs and decided, you know what, I'm done with that. And I just let it grow and it's, this is all me now. So I don't have to worry about that insecurity anymore. And you're going to get beautiful. And I'm working on it. I got a little here and a little here. But there are other insecurities that people have that are bigger things. Like where's the next paycheck come from? Or how am I going to heat my home? Big things that are insecurities. But there's one thing that we can always, always be secure in. Anybody know what that is? The Lord's love. God's love. And with all of the shifting sands in life and how things go up and down and up and down and sometimes we're, we feel blessed and sometimes we don't, we can always be secure in God's love. His love is never changing and never fails. It's something that we are always to be secure in. And why is that? Because God is love. He is love. That is his essence. So if God doesn't change, his love doesn't change either. It stays the way it is. It's pure. 1 John 4, 8 says, The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, Love never fails. Romans 3, or 8, 38 and 39, you all know this anyways. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, is this new information for anybody here? I hope not. Those are foundational truths. Those are, I just love a baby. Those are foundational truths for every believer. Even before accepting Jesus, I bet you learned the song, Jesus Loves Me. I remember singing that when I was just a little, little girl. Long before I knew Jesus as my Savior. And that tells us, it's the Bible tells us so. Back in that song that we learned, we know on one level that God loves us. Go ahead and ask your neighbor, does God love me? No, not you. Does God love me? Does God love me? Yeah, God does God me. love me? Yeah, yeah. That's easy. He's the perfect father. Your neighbor will tell you the truth on that one. God does love you. But here's the issue. Until you are secure in the knowledge that God loves you, you will never grow up as a Christian. You have to be secure in that. You will always have a question in your mind for God. Do you love me? That'll be in your mind. We look at people around us and wonder if he really loves us. The other guy gets better stuff, so God must love him more. Or this lady over here has a better husband, so God must love her more. And we don't think about that it's a foundational truth that God loves us. When the question plays over and over in our minds, it stunts where we can go with the Lord. We ask Him in our prayers, do you love me? Do you really love me, Lord? When we sin, then we're saying, oh, Lord, do you really love me, even me? And that's a question that we have in our minds. And we remember our past, and you wonder, God, do you love me? And we 
wait and we wait and we wait for God to show us that he loves us. That's what we wait for. We wait for him to show us. And we stay immature as Christians and insecure as Christians because we're looking for him to prove to us that he loves us. How can you know that God has already shown once and for all that he loves you? That's exactly it. For God so loved the world, say it with me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We know that. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. That's John 3, 16 and 17. Here's another one. This should be in your mind forever. Whenever you question whether God loves you. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know, is that any, that's not written in your bulletin, is it? So you're going to repeat it with me. For God demonstrates yeah. his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you know what that means? He showed us. He showed us at the biggest cost possible, he already demonstrated it. His love is clearly demonstrated in the good news. Jesus died for you before you even knew you needed a Savior. While you were still enjoying sin, Jesus died for you. God's love is unchanging. Remember, it doesn't get any bigger or better. It doesn't decrease or become less effective, no matter what you do, because it's not based on what we deserve. If I had to wait for to be able to deserve God's love, He would never love me. But His love is not based on what I do or who I am. His love is based on who he is. And he doesn't change. This should not be news to you. You should all know this. But it's something that we need to establish. We needed to talk about that before we could move on to the message. Now last week, Pastor Scott talked about how mature Christians don't look to be served. And I'm going to kind of continue along that vein a little bit. But there's one more truth that you need to think about before we go there. We don't move God by our service. Think about that for a minute. We don't change God by what we do, by our service. We demonstrate our love for him by our service but we don't change him. And I'll get into that as we go. He won't love us more if we serve more. He won't love us less if we serve less. His love is unchanging. We don't get more acceptable to him by our service. It's important that we talk about that because I'm going to get into talking about service and good works. And I don't want you to think that if you serve more, you deserve more from God. Because that's not the case. We need to take that right off the table. The more you serve does not mean that's more you deserve. Okay? The more you serve, you're showing God your love for Him, but it doesn't mean that you get to pile up blessings for yourself. That's, that's not how it works. If you're looking for God to show his love by rewarding your service or by giving you approval 
by changing your circumstances or by any other way, it isn't going to happen. You'll stay insecure and frustrated. That's not how I want to be. Anybody want to be insecure and frustrated? No. no. You will never be able to grow up to maturity in Christ. God doesn't show his love toward us based on our service. He demonstrated it once and for all. Where? At the cross. At the cross. That's right. So, there's no need to wait for God's answer to our question, do you love me? He showed you already. He showed me already. At the cross. That he loves us. Well, what about the reverse? What about our answer when God asks us, do you love me? That's what we're going to talk about today. Who here loves the Lord? If you love the Lord, shout amen. 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 It was simple. We answer without even thinking about it. Words are easy. Actions, not so much. We wait for God to show us, and he already has. Jesus waits for us to show him that we love him. And we're waiting for him to move. We've got it backwards. Here is where a mature Christian would have their focus. Serving is the mark of mature Christians. And I'm going to get into that a little bit. We're not serving to get God's approval. That's not it. Now, the cross tells me that the Lord loves me. But I want to show the Lord that I love him. This is where the service part comes in. Because, you know, Jesus was really clear about some things that we don't think about too much. I know I don't think about it too much. How do we show Jesus that we love him? Jesus clearly tells us what he's looking for. Did you know that? That Jesus tells us what he's looking for, for us to show him that we love him. He's looking for something. First of all, number one, Jesus is looking for those who keep his commandments. That's what he's looking for. That's what the Bible says. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him. And I like this part. And will dis disclose myself to him. I'm going to show myself to the people who love me who keep my commandments. So what are the commandments? Well, this is pretty easy. Matthew 22, 36 through 40, Jesus was asked, Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. So here Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's a commandment, so we're to keep it. keeps the whole list of everything in the Old Testament, in the law, and in the prophets, if we keep those commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. But who is your neighbor? Well, that's it. that was answered too. Jesus told us that in the, in the parable of the Good Samaritan. The na your neighbor could be the one sitting next to you in the pew. Wave to him and say, hi neighbor. Hi neighbor. Hi neighbor. Hi neighbor. Hi neighbor. Your neighbor could be a friend that attends a different church. That's fine too. We all have neighbors like that. Or your neighbor that could be the despicable guy that drives you crazy. Yeah, that's right. Is that true? Yeah. Jesus says, love God and love your neighbor. He didn't say love the nice ones. 
that look like us? He said, love God and love your neighbor. Keep my command. If you love me. If you love me. Keep my commandments. Amen. Number two. Jesus is looking for those who do more than the world offers. It's not enough just to be nice to the past. All right? Smile and wave and grumble over your breath. Sometimes, sometimes that's all it takes. Jesus is looking for those who do more than the world offers. Jesus said this. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? He wants something that's different than the world would do. I'm now from North Carolina. And I've got to tell you, it's a wonderful place down there. Everyone smiles. You go to Walmart, everybody smiles. There are, Miles knows, because he lives down there. It's, it's the biggest thing when we get out of the car up here and go to the grocery store, we feel like, wow, we are bright, sunny, happy people in the people in the store. Like, it's got to be that lake of that cloud. I don't know what it is. So, if I was in North Carolina and talking about smiling, that's what everybody does. Here, even smiling and being decent to somebody is more than the world is going to do. You see what I'm saying? There's, you can reach out and be more than what everybody else would be. Jesus is expecting us to do more than the bare minimum that everybody else would be. And Jesus, number three, is looking for us to love others by serving. <coughs> you know, when, when I was thinking about this message, I, I can picture Jesus actually looking for people to show, show him that they love him, that they truly love him. I can picture him looking and saying, do you love me? Do you love me? And looking to see what you're doing. Looking to see what I'm doing. We went to the fair, I don't know, three, four, five times last week. We went to the fair a lot. More than when we lived here. And I had an encounter with the Lord at the fair. I'm standing in line at uh, the dinosaur barbecue waiting to get my pulled pork sandwich. And I'm looking around and asking the Lord, where are you here today, Lord? And he kind of spoke to my heart. And he said, I'm over here. And it was in an area that I would never be. I would never want to associate with people like that. And the Lord was just kind of was telling me they needed him more than I did. And it made me think when Jesus, and he kind of said to me, do you love me? And I'm thinking, boy, Lord, I don't know if I love you that much. It made me really think, what am I doing with my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Do I really love you, Lord? I say that I do. But am I willing to do what you would call me to do? Now, this is where you're going to need your bulletin. On the last page, I have um, what John wrote down in the Gospel of John, a discussion that Jesus had with Peter. 
because I don't know if what's going to come up on the screen is going to say what the New American Standard says. This was after the resurrection. Um, the guys all went back out, they all went out fishing. The story of when they're all out fishing in the boat, they come back in and haven't caught anything, and Jesus says, hey, throw the net on the other side, and then it's filled with fish, and oh, Lord, it's you. And they had seen him, that, according to John, it was the third time that they had seen him after the resurrection. And starting in verse 15, it says, So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of God, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love them. He said to them, Tend my sheep. See what it says up there? What's it say? It says, feed. I want us to think for a minute what Jesus was really saying to Peter. I loved reading it in the New American Standard Bible because in our mind, feeding sheep is kind of like feeding cows. All right? If, if you've ever fed cows, you just pile up their food and walk away, right? And they come and eat when they want it, which is usually right away. If you throw a hay bale out in the yard, they're going to come up and eat. And then, you know, they immediately do that. The farmer does not stand there and make sure they're okay. Tending sheep is very different. And remember that Jesus is talking to a group of people who knew what it was like to tend sheep. They didn't just, the person that had to tend the sheep needed to make sure that, the, that they were in a, a pasture that was safe. So he, would, he may have to take them down long, winding paths through steep, mountain cliffs, if you can picture what um, David said in, in Psalm 23, he had a lot of work to do to make sure that the sheep were safe and that they could go and eat in a good place. It wasn't a matter of just throwing food at them and walking away. That shepherd had to lead them. The one tending the sheep had to be with them the whole Time. Never left them. Stayed right with them. Took them to places where it was safe to drink. A place that wasn't going to have a flash flood go through and wipe out the flock. Because from what I understand, they're not very smart sheep. No. So the shepherd really needed to do a lot to tend the sheep. So we need to remember that. When we're looking at this, and the scriptures that say feed the sheep, that's right. But it's more than what we think. And we need to have our heads more lined up with the cultural thing that they would have been thinking, what Peter would have been thinking. When Jesus said, feed my, my lambs. When Jesus said, feed my lambs, Peter in his mind was thinking what we would call tending the sheep. <clears throat> tending them, being with them every minute. Now what we do in the world, what the world would do, we could see happened with Hurricane Harvey. What we do is put a check in the mail. Or we drop off things at uh, the Karen Share Shop. Or we do things so we don't have to really associate with those people. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yep. We don't want to spend time with them, so we'll just give them our stuff and walk away and say, I fed the sheep. Or we could be dropping <coughs> off a tract or a Bible or whatever and just say, there, I fed you. That's not what Jesus was saying. Tending sheep takes real involvement. 
leading them to a place of still waters, leading them to a place of green pastures, and watching over them. That's what Jesus was saying. He said to him again a second time, verse 16, Simon, son of, of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, shepherd my sheep. Shepherd my sheep. That takes involvement. Verse 17. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, ten my sheep. And Jesus says it to us. And how can we do that? We can provide a safe, comfortable pasture for people. We can provide, we can be involved in their lives and care about them. I, for years coming here, you know, we've We've always got sign-up sheets here for how you can be involved in ministry here and how you can be involved in taking care of the physical plant of the church, how you can keep it tidy or whatever. And I've thought about how it's serving the Lord. But Jesus didn't say, come and serve me. He said, do you love me? If you love me, tend my sheep. If you love me, keep my commandments. So to me, instead of saying, Lord, I'm going to clean this church to serve you, I would say, Lord, I'm going to clean to make sure the sheep have a comfortable place to feed. I'm going to serve you not by trying to serve you directly, but I'm going to do what you said in your word. I'm going to tend the lambs. I'm going to make people be the thing that shows my love for you. <coughs> Jesus goes on and he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you to where you do not wish to go. Now I said this, signifying by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, Jesus said to him, follow me. So all he needed to do was say, keep your focus on me and feed my sheep. Keep your focus on me. So what does Peter do? Peter turning around, hello, mm -hmm. Jesus says, follow me. Peter turns around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who had also leaned back in, on his bosom at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? We're talking about the Apostle John. So Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, what about this man? Doesn't that happen in the body of Christ? Yes. That when the Lord calls us to do something, to show that we love him, and we're ministering to other people, we turn around and see somebody else who doesn't do a blessed thing and they get blessed. What about them? Jesus said, if I want him to remain until I come, this is one of my favorite scriptures, what's it to you? <laughs> it's what it says. What's it say up there? There we go. What is that to you? What's it to you? What I'm doing with that guy over there. Do you love me? What's it to you? 
what they're doing. Do you love me? Keep my commandments. Feed my sheep. Jesus redirects Peter and he redirects us when we look at others and we're trying to figure out what they should be doing. It's not our concern. Today, here's my question for you. Will you allow the Lord to redirect your focus so you're not focused on what everybody else is getting, how God is showing his love and it seems to be piling up because we know, right? God demonstrated his love where? At the cross. It's not by piles of blessings. God demonstrates his love one way at the cross over Dunwood. We need to focus ourselves instead of thinking about God, do you love me? And looking at other people. We need to hear that question that he's asking us. Because Jesus is asking us, do you love me? If you want to grow into spiritual maturity, you need to keep that focus. Today, do you want him to redirect you so that you're focused on his question to, to us? Then you will grow in maturity in the Lord. There's three ways I wrote down on that note sheet for three steps, if, if you want to put it that way. To make sure you're focused in the right direction. First of all, don't ask God, do you love me? He's already shown you at the cross. That's it. Over, done with. Don't try to serve him to earn his love because he's already shown you at the cross and that's sufficient. If you don't believe that is sufficient enough for you, then you need to have a conversation with the Lord or with the pastor or somebody. Because you probably have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Anybody who knows Jesus as their Savior knows the incredible price that was paid. But that is enough. That's enough love. That is enough. It has nothing to do with what God is doing with somebody else. It's his demonstration of his love at the cross. We don't need to keep asking him, do you love me? If you love me, Lord, you do this. No, he said, I love you. I did this. Done. Over. Done. And you need to, number two, look into your heart and honestly answer Jesus when he asks you, do you love me? And then you, number three, you show your love for Jesus by serving others. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It just needs to be more than the world would do. Right now, the world won't listen, but you can. What's that take but just a little time? Show your love for Jesus by serving others. This is uh, another scripture about his love. 1 John 4, 19 through 21 says, We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. In this command that we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. Serving God doesn't make him love us more. Serving demonstrates how much we love him. Amen. Can we all stand and pray?
We're just gonna we're gonna pray. If you you can sit, it's just what you say here. It's what Pastor says, so I have to say it. Let's all stand. And you know, in the other church I go to, they do the same thing. But you can be seated either way. Well, we're gonna pray. And I'm gonna go back here to some scripture. Can you pray after me? Lord, Lord. You, know all things. you know all things. You know that I love you. you, know I love you. Can you show me, Lord, show me, Lord how, I can tend your sheep, how I can tend your sheep, how I can keep your commands, keep your commands to love you, love you and love my neighbor. Lord, give me opportunities and nudge me and ask me again and again, do you love me so I won't forget? In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Amen.